بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون آئی ہوپ یو آر ڈوئنگ ول دا ٹاپک آف ٹڈیز ڈسکشن از پلیسز اینڈ مینر آف آرٹیکولیشن ان انگلش فنالوجی سو لیٹس بگن آر ٹڈیز لیکچر پریکٹیکل فنیٹکس کلاسیفائنگ ساؤنڈس ون وی کلاسیفائی ساؤنڈ سو دن وی ہیو پلیس آف آرٹیکولیشن اینڈ مینر آف آرٹیکولیشن سو ون وی سی place of articulation so we refer to the question where and when we say manner of articulation so we refer to the question how so how sounds are produced this is manner of articulation and where sounds are produced this is place of articulation so remember these two question were where that is place of articulation how that is manner of articulation thinking about sound try to say m mm. where is the m sound produce so of course you are using your upper lip and your lower lip and so it is a bilabial consonant sound then when you say m mm, it is a bilabial consonant sound this is the place of articulation so when we are talking about that which organ are used in the production of speech sound we are talking about a uh, place of articulation so pinch your nose what happens it's a stop not a nasal or an oral consonant which one we talking about this one mm. so m mm, it is a nasal consonant sound so it's a stop sound it's not an oral sound because vowels are oral sound while consonants are not oral sound so put your finger in your ear what do you hear when you say m mm, what do you hear is it voice or voiceless sound so of course you will feel some vibration so when you feel vibration the sound is to be called a voiced consonant sound so the vibration of the vocal cords it's a voiced sound so this sound mm, first place it is called bilabial sound so that is the place of articulation in the second it is stop it is manner of articulation because it's not a nasal not an oral consonant so it is a stop sound and a stop consonant sound so there is this is then the manner of articulation so put your finger, finger in your ear what do you feel so then there is a voice consonant sound so whenever you are describing a sound or whenever you are describing a consonant sound you have to focus three aspect of a sound place of articulation manner of articulation and voicing if a sound where a sound is produced how a sound is produced whether it is vibrated or not vibrated so these are the three aspects when you are describing a consonant sound Let's first talk about some places of articulation by labial consonant. So when we say by labial what comes in mind lips. Right? And in lips upper lip and lower lip. You can see this is lower lip and this is upper lip. So the sounds which are produced with the help of two lips, upper lip and two upper lips such sounds are called by labial sound. and by labial when we say by labial sound so we are referring to place of articulation right so we have example here like p pi and b by and m mute and w word so then we have how many by labial sound in english phonology we have four by labial sounds in english phonology one is p second is b third is m and fourth is w so the first we the first two 
P and B. So P is voiceless and B is voiced. Similarly, M is voiced sound. And W is also a voiced sound. So we have only one P in bilabial which is a voiceless sound. And the rest three are voiced sound. Let's talk about labiodental consonant. So when we say labiodental, so two different organs are involved in the production of these speech sound. You can see lower lip and upper teeth. So such sounds, labiodental sounds are produced with the help of upper lip, sorry, upper teeth and lower lip. We have example of labidental sound such as f and v. Again, here we have two sounds. One is voiceless and other one is voice. The first one, f, fine is voiceless while the second, v, vine is voiced. So if you are describing the sound f, for example, you will say that it is a labial dental a uh, fricative sound so labidental would be place of articulation and fricative will be manner of articulation and voiceless would be according to voice right so two organs remember lower lip and upper teeth try to say f and then say v Two more sounds, dental consonants. So dental consonants are produced with the help of upper teeth and tip of the tongue. So you take the tip of the tongue towards behind upper teeth and you produce this sound. Sometimes they are also called interdental sound. So they become interdental when you take out the tip of tongue between upper and lower teeth. While when you take the tip of the tongue towards upper teeth or just behind upper teeth, so then we call such sound as dental consonant. Again, we have two here. One is th and one is th. So the, the word thin and thin or the one thin and this, right? So the word thank you and the word uh, like brother. So we have sound th and th. So they are called dental consonant sound. So this is the place of articulation, right? While well, the manner of articulation of these sounds would be fricatives because there, there is produced a friction when we produce such sound. The first one is voiceless and the second one is voiced. Here we have some more sounds which are technically called alveolar consonants because there is the use of alveolar ridge. So you can see alveolar ridge. So where is alveolar ridge? Alveolar ridge is just behind the part of your upper teeth. Just take your finger and see what comes after behind upper part of teeth. So this area is called alveolar ridge. Fine. So such sounds are produced with the help of alveolar ridge. So you are using alveolar ridge. This is the place just behind the part of upper teeth and you are using the tip or blade of the tongue. So again two articulators are here like tip or blade of the tongue right and here we have alveolar ridge. So this thing would be tip or blade of the tongue would be active articulators because they, they are movable and alveolar ridge would be a passive articulator because we do not move it. So we have certain sounds like we have t and we have d. We have s and we have z. We have n and we have 
l. So the first one that is t like tie, tree, tomorrow, today would be a voiceless consonant sounds. By place of articulation it would be alveolar. By manner of articulation it would be stop. Similarly we have d. So d by place of articulation it would be stop or plosive. By manner of articulation sorry by place of articulation it would be alveolar. By manner of articulation it would be stop and by voicing it would be a voiced one. So the first one is voiceless, t is voiceless and d is a voiced one. Example here we have die or do, right? Then we have s, so when we produce s, what, what you are doing? You are taking the blade of your tongue towards alveolar ridge. Like we have example that is su or we can say snake or school. So s by place of articulation it is alveolar. By manner it is fracture. By voicing it is voiceless. And then we have z. By place it is what? Alveolar sound. By manner it is fracture. By voicing it is a voiced one. And then we have also n and l. So n by place it is alveolar. By manner it is, uh, you can call it, you can call it stop. For example, night. And by voicing, voicing it would be, you can call it stop. And by voicing it would be a voiced consonant sound and then we have sound l now by place we can call it alveolar and by voicing it is a voiced consonant sound and by manner we call it a liquid consonant sound here we are with some more sounds and they are called post-alveolar or palliative alveolar consonants. So post-alveolar is an area which comes after alveolar in your mouth. So first we have like lip, then we have upper teeth and behind upper teeth we have alveolar ridge and after alveolar ridge what comes that is called, that is called post-alveolar area. And after post alveolar, then we have palatal. So that's why they, these sounds are called post alveolar. So this is the place of articulation of these sound. So we have sh and j. So by place of articulation, these sounds are called post alveolar. By manner, they are called fricative. By voicing, the first one is voiceless like shoe and pressure and by voicing the second one is a voiced one like pleasure not player most people pronounce it or in old tradition or old professors and teacher pronounce it as player it's not player it is pleasure not treasure it is treasure so shoe and pressure these are voiceless consonants sound sh and je is a voiced one. We have three more. One is ch and one is j. By place they are both alveolar consonant. By manner they are affricate. While the last one here we have that is r. So by place that is post alveolar. By manner we call it approximate consonant sound. By voicing it is a voiced one. So ch is voiceless, j is voice, and r is also a voiced one. Now, here we have palatal consonant. So we have here one palatal consonant, sometime or some phonetation also include l in palatal consonant sound. So no matter if you call it like palatal or you call it alveolar because 
very close to the place of alveolar ridge and palatal that's why some phonetician place it in alveolar while other place it palatal which one yeah sorry l so y is palatal and l is also palatal right l can be palatal or l can be alveolar so here we have y like in yes so by uh, place of articulation it is palatal by manner it is approximal and by voicing it is a voiced one velar consonant so we are using velum to produce velar consonant and we are using back part of the tongue so back part of the tongue would be an active articulator this is back part of the tongue and velum then would be a passive articulator why we call it passive articulator because we do not move it in sound production and we use back part of the tongue because it's movable that's why it's called active articulator so velar sounds are produced with the help of back part of the tongue and velum we have sound like k, g m mm. so these in the first sound k it is uh, a voiceless sound the second one is g a voiced one and the third one m mm, is also a voiced one so by place of articulation these three sounds are called velar sound by manner k g m mm, they are called stop sound right and by voicing the first one is voiceless while the two are voiced one example is kal kate cap etc gal glass and glue and m mm, like king hing shing and wing now after places of articulation now we should talk what are the manner of articulation of consonant sounds even we gave touch to manner of articulation when we were talking about places of articulation but here we will talk in a little bit more detail about manners of articulation the first one that is plosive so p b t d k g they are called plosive or stop sound so by place of articulation p b by labial t d alveolar k g velar but by manner of articulation these all six sounds are called stops or plosive sounds fricatives thing friction so when we produce such sound we allow the air to pass through a narrow passage or there is produce a little bit friction that's why we call such sound uh, uh, as fricative sound so we have f v s z r a uh, sh j so we have these sounds they are called fricative sounds so by place of articulation f v labidental s z alveolar or where is sh j they are called palatal but by manner of articulation we call them fricatives oral consonant sounds and nasal consonant sounds so you can see that this is the production of oral consonant sound where the velum is not lower and you allow the ear to pass through oral cavity here you can see that the velum is lower and you block oral cavity and let the ear to pass through nasal cavity so when the ear is pass through nasal cavity and the velum is lower you block the oral cavity and the ear is passed through nasal cavity such sounds are called nasal sounds and when the velum is not lower and you allow the ear to pass through oral cavity such sounds are called oral consonant sounds 
Here we have the example of nasal sounds. So by manner of articulation, m, n, and n are called nasal consonant sound. By place, it is bilabial, it is alveolar, and it is velar. For example, we can say uh, mother, or we can say nose, or we can say king. So these three sounds we have nasal, that is the manner of articulation when you lower the velum and you let the ear to pass through nasal cavity. We have some other consonants like affricates, <clears throat> a combination of stop plus fricative. When you combine stop and fricative, it becomes affricate, like we have ch. So ch is voiceless post alveolar. Affricate. So, affricate would be manner of articulation. Post alveolar would be place of articulation. And we have j, voiced post alveolar affricate. So, when we say affricate, so you are combining stop and fricative manner of articulation. And you are producing then affricate sound. Approximate articulator approach each other but do not touch like wo. R and Y. So approximate, they are in association with each other, but they do not touch each other. Otherwise, then uh, uh, they would uh, create problem in the production of these sound. We can't say like R. We can't say like W. We will say W. We will say R. We will say Y. Now, lateral, also called lateral approximant. So, Air flows over sides of the tongue like we have sound L. So L is also called a lateral consonant sound. So by manner, L would be lateral. By place, it would be alveolar. Now we should summarize summary of places of articulation. By labial, we are using lips. P, B, M, W. Labidental lips and teeth, f, v. Dental tongue and teeth. Alveolar tongue and alveolar ridge. Palatal alveolar tongue and front part of heart palate. Palatal tongue and heart palate. Velar tongue and velum. And glottal, we use glottis, the places, the place between your vocal fold. Now, summary of manner of articulation. Plosive or stop. P, B, T, D, K, G. And fricatives. F, V, F, Z, S, Z, Sh, J, H. Affricate, stop plus fricative. Like T, J. And nasal. M, N, N. And approximate. W, R, Y. Central, that is L or lateral. Classifying consonant, voice or voiceless, place of articulation, central or lateral, oral or nasal, manner of articulation. So when we are describing a consonant sound or we classify a consonant sound, so we classify, classify according to voice, according to uh, place, according to manner or according to uh, voice already we mentioned. Example where we have like sing. So a voiceless alveolar central oral fricative. This is the example of sing. When we say sing, so it would be a voiceless alveolar, right? And it would be oral or we, we call it fricative. So when we say sing, so it is voiceless and it is alveolar, place of articulation. And manner would be fricative. So a voiceless alveolar plosive or stop. So t, what is k? So then t would be a voiceless and it would be alveolar and it would be stop. And what about k? A k would be a voiceless and it would be velar and it would be stop. So a voiceless velar plosive sound, which one? 
here we can see the international phonetic alphabet english consonant chart so this side which is called uh, horizontal horizontally you can see places of articulation like bilabial labiodental dental alveolar post alveolar blah blah and uh, vertically you can see manner of articulation for example plosive nasal and uh, like fricative blah blah so this side you can see this is vertical they they are manner of articulation and this is horizontal you can see places of articulation so p b so bilabial how they are bilabial according to place of articulation by manner they are called plosive so by manner we can see p b t d k and g they are called plosive and by uh, place of articulation by labial alveolar and velar this chart is more visible classifying of consonant phoneme so manner of articulation you can see vertically and places of articulation you can see horizontally so stop voiceless and you can see p and b by labial that is place of articulation and stop that is manner of articulation and by voicing p is voiceless and and b it is voice similarly uh, you can see here T that is alveolar place of articulation by manner it is stop and by voicing it is voiceless d it is voiced one alveolar by place manner that is stop voicing that is voice velar k and g k that is velar place manner would be stop and the k that is voiceless and g that would be voiced one right so similarly you can read this all chart and identify these consonant sounds according to place manner and voicing so three things are very much important when you are describing a consonant sound you have to talk about place of articulation manner of articulation and its voicing Thank you so much it was all about places and manner of articulation of consonant sound keep watching and enjoy learning with mr mohammad imran